Hello guys, welcome to today's session. Today we are going to discuss about data modeling. This is the core concept of MDG. It is very important that almost in every project there will be some work related to this. So basically either data model extension or else new data model. New data model it will be a bit uh, rare to use but more important these concepts. So these concepts will be asked in almost every interview. So that is why this is most important. So I will go through this data modeling first of all. So I have prepared some sl slides in this. So here we can see data modeling is the process of creating a model that represents data and how it is stored, processed and accessed. This creates staging area. So basically what is staging area? So suppose there is a database table which we have created at SAP level. SAP ABAP level. So that will be there in application area. But when we are creating any new data, suppose, suppose we are going to create a change request in MDG. So when we are creating that change request, a temporary data has to be there which should be stored in some temporary database tables. So basically to create those temporary database tables, we have to use data modeling. So whenever we do this data modeling part after creation of this after generation and activation of this particular data model in back end system will generate its database tables which we can see in mdg underscore data underscore model there will be a t code related to that. So there we can do it. So furthermore I will discuss about other properties which are most important in further slides. So from UI part, I will go to main T code MDG IMG. In this, we will have general settings. Here in data modeling, we will get option to create any data model or edit anything. So let's go into this parallelly. So here we can see all the existing data models. In this place only we will create one data model. Now in inside data modeling in left side we can see all these hierarchy structures. So basically we can select any data model which is created by SAP and if we go into entity types there will be multiple entities. So when we go for first time into this if you don't have any knowledge related to MDG, just I will let you know what is entity type. So entity is representation of a field or group of fields that has similar properties of storage and use type, time dependencies, etc. So if we go into an, any entity type, double click it, we will be able to see all these attributes. So basically what is an entity? So from my experience I can say that entity is a group of fields or a field. Sometimes it will represent as a field in a UI. Sometimes it will represent as a group of fields. Group of fields means if we go into attributes section by clicking on any entity we can see all attributes related to that entity. So that is why here we can see attributes also. That means here we can add multiple attributes related to any particular entity. So that means in address we can add multiple things here and system will accept it under some circumstances. So that's what. So that is why entity can be representation of, of a field or group of fields that has that has similar properties of storage, usage type, time dependencies etc that's it. So basically entity is like this. Let's go more deep into this. So after that types of entities. This is the most important question which will be asked in many interviews. So what we can answer? It is also called storage and use type shortly. And here we can see all these type of entities so basically SU type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. So these four are entity types. 
So if we go into any entity type here, here we can see all these four in this drop down. For any drop down, if we if we go to any data model, the drop down will be common. Not only for this data model, for any data model which is either custom or either standard for any data model, this this particular framework is same. That is why any entity type we can select, it will be like four types of storage or use types. Let's discuss more about this. So basically, these are four entity types. So here, I will show you why it is called changeable via change request. This is because type one entity can be attached to any change request, but whereas other other change requests, other type two entity and type three, type four, these other type of entities we cannot attach to any change request because system will not allow as per concept also. That one also I will show you. So this one you can understand from process modeling. So here in process modeling there will be workflow and change request. So whenever we create any change request type, basically this is a change request. So it will follow one workflow process in backend. So if we select any change request and go to entity types, here we have to attach some entity types here. So here we can only see type 1 entity. We cannot attach any type 2, type 3 and type 4 entities to a particular change request. That is why type 1 will have this description, changeable via change request. We cannot at attach any other entity types to a particular change request type. That is why, that is the reason. So this one you understood. Next one, why it is called as generated database tables. So why it is called? I will go to UI and create a custom data model for you to understand this particular definition. Let's go to edit data model. I will create one new data model with Z4. Now first I am giving some description. Z4 means let's say test data model for now. So this active area means suppose after activation of that change request the data has to get replicated to backend the other database tables. In those cases we have to mention this one and there will be some coding involved behind this active area. So I will discuss about it later. This prefixes are namespace. This this one, whenever we are creating uh, or generating any data model, after generation, some structures and tables will get generated in backend. So those structures, it should start with this prefix. That is why whenever we are activating it, this prefix something we have to give. So in my case, I will give ZMDG is a prefix so that it will start with ZMDG. Now package. Package means as you know as an adapter, package means in system whatever our development will get captured under the package only. So that's it. Now I have created an empty data model. Let's go to entity types. Now let's understand what happens. Now I am going to create one new entity type. Now first let's understand why this is called changeable via change request. This one we understood generated database tables. Why this particular definition is there? Why it is getting generated? Let's see it practically. I am going to create type 1. It is the name of the entity type I am just giving for understanding. So I am giving this first one. First one is type 1 entity. So I am just giving this and data element we have to give it because type 1 entity, type 1 entity either we can give this data model, data element or there is an option not to give data element as well. So if we don't give any data element, we have to mention attributes inside that. So that is why I am giving data element here itself. So we can, I am just giving for example, char 10 I am giving. Now if I save it, system will not show any errors, it will get saved into TR 
now if i come back to main section let's go back now z4 i am going back now i am activating this z4 now let's see why it is called generated database tables so here we can see at the bottom of the screen check generating database structures and all so after clicking on this one and okay now let's go to t code mdg data model this is the t code which is more important to understand this concept so z4 i am giving because this is the data model i have created here now on clicking on execute we can see a table got created so these are generated tables by mdg we can see in this particular t code so if we double click this we can see a check table got generated by mdg this database table got generated by mdg that is the reason why we call type 1 entity as changeable via change request generated database tables now let's try to understand what is this type 2 entity if we go to type 2 entity i am going to this particular data model and i am going to create one new entity here now this entity name is type 2 i am giving for your understanding i can uh, in real world example there will be some meaningful names for now let's try to have this one as type 2 so that on seeing it we can understand so i am giving as type 2 entity type here storage or use type is type 2 and data element so first let's understand this one also type 2 entity and type 3 entities both are a similar type of entities but in this both cases this is one common property we should give any data element if we try to give any data element here suppose i am giving as cat 10 if i try to click on save it does it accepts yeah system will accept this data element but if we don't give anything here system will throw an error specify data element so type 2 and type 3 data element is must but for type 4 it is not i will look into this that later now let's focus on this here in data element for now i am giving care 15 and saving this one now data has been saved now let's go to now let's go to here list of generated database tables go back mdg data model t code z4 now executing this type 1 entity is there now what happened this one even though i saved it i didn't activate this data model now let's activate this z4 data model and see now it has been created and activated now now let's go here go back and see this list now type 1 is generating database table in back end type 2 is also generating a check table the both are creating tables that is the reason this particular thing is there generated check or text tables that is the reason why it is mentioned here so type 2 and type 1 both will generate database tables but here another change is there to remember in this particular type 2 entity type database tables check tables or text tables will be created at mdg level itself and another part is when we are checking this type 2 entity inside this if we try to add any attributes here 
system will throw error let's see so care 20 i gave now if i try to save this the basically this is mdg restriction attribute should not be assigned to type 2 entity even this restriction will apply for type 3 entity as well i repeat this particular restriction will be applicable for both type 2 and type 3 entities now let's understand type 3 entity i am going back and first of all i have to remove this one before that let's understand now type 3 entity i mentioned no attributes here because system doesn't allow to add any attributes under this particular entity type it is that we have to mention only at type 2 entity level only no attributes are needed now type 3 entity this is not changeable via mdg so why it is not changeable we can see in the ui itself because uh, at last we can understand this particular statement this this one we cannot change change it from mdg only creation is possible but we cannot change anything because it is used as a key field let's see now no generated database tables why it is mentioned for this type 3 entity now here even though it is type 2 entity let's try to change this one to type 3 entity and save it no no i can do this but i will not do because first of all i have to remove this attribute from here but even though i changed it to type 3 entity it doesn't allow attribute must not be assigned to entity type type 2 here if we click on long text it will show however attributes can be assigned to only element types with storage and use types 1 and 4 that means only for type 1 and type 4 entities we can assign attributes not to type 2 and type 3 entities now here let's go back and change this to type 2 only and go back here i will add a new entity type type 3 entity i will add now type 3 and storage and use type i will add as type 3 now data element if i don't give system will throw error i will show you see we have to specify a data element so i will specify one data element here car 5 i have assigned some dummy data element here now i am going to z4 this entity types so in type 2 entity we have to remove this attribute because this will cause error we cannot activate the data model now i have removed this now go back type 1 type 2 type 3 i have created all these entity types now if i activate this now it is system is generating all the database tables and all that's it now let's go to generated tables so now i am trying to execute this still we are able to see type 1 and type 2 not type 3 why is this happening the answer is this one so for type 3 entity even after activation of the data model no generated tables so we cannot generate any database tables it doesn't get generated no attributes are also needed this one i showed you previously if we add it, if you try to add any attribute system will throw an error that's it so next 
let's un try to understand type for entity type now type for entity type why this definition is there changeable via other entity type i will show you directly in the system when we are trying to add any new entity type with type for entity i'm just giving type for here as a description name of the entity type here i am giving type for entity and data element so we have to understand that this data element has to be only given for type 2 and type 3 for type 1 we can have optional either we can give it or not it doesn't matter but for type 4 if we give any data element here suppose i am giving care 4 as a data element here and trying to save this one it will throw error messages because here entry of a data element is invalid so we can see here data elements cannot be specified for this storage and use type you selected so for our type 4 entity we should not mention any data element here because we have to it is totally dependent on attributes that is the reason we have to keep it as blank every time now if we go to attributes for type 4 let's mention some attributes because at least one attribute is necessary attr1 i am giving for example and here care1 i am giving that's it system will accept now but the thing is now if we try to save this it doesn't get activated because this these two relationships like because the definition itself says changeable via other change entity type so for type for entity here we have to attach this type for entity by using relationships from either type 1 entity or any other entity basically from type 1 to type 4 they will mean uh, anyone should maintain one leading relationship basically so type 1 to type 4 leading relationship or either type 4 to type 4 also we can do leading relationship that is the point so individually type 4 doesn't exist in any any um, data model individually it doesn't exist we have to link it link it to the type 1 entity that is why this definition says changeable via other change entity type now next question is why this generated database tables is there first let's add that particular relationship and see so here in this relationship first from entity type should be type 1 entity type 1 here type 4 so type 1 to type 4 we will mention leading relationship cardinality it is another concept in our case i will give one to one this is the relationship name i gave this and i am saving this now it, it doesn't give any errors i'm just saving this and activating this one i am activating now z4 data model will get activated after getting activated let's see the list of database tables which got generated by mdg system now it is generated execute this now we can see one two three total three database tables got created by mdg so one is from type 1 another one is through type 4 entity another is one is type 3 type 2 entity so type 3 doesn't create any um, any database table that is the reason so by now you should have understood most of the uh, definitions available here so type 1 is changeable with change request type 2 is changeable without change request and generated database tables so 
only this one doesn't generate any database tables again type 4 generates so this one overall you have I, I guess you have understood by now why this particular definitions are there for the end types of entities now let's go in depth to relationships so relationship is like whatever entities we create until now solely uh, type 4 entity does not exist so that is why there will be some relationship concept which is introduced by MDG from initial uh, initial release only so relationship is the linkage between entities which de be define the behavior of attributes or entity types as fields in generated tables so basically what is relationship let's understand so there will be basically three types of relationships which are mostly used I will explain those first one is leading relationship second one is qualifying relationship third one is referencing relationship fourth one is foreign key relationship so these are four types of relationships which we can deal with in MDG these three are mostly used fourth one we can keep it aside for now let's understand what is re leading relationship leading relationship means so bank there is a bank at first and there is a bank account after that so if bank itself does not exist bank account will not even exist that means bank account bank is leading to bank account without bank there will not be any bank account exists in the system like that this is the relationship leading relationship another one is qualifying qualifying relationship is basically there should be one relationship exist from type 3 to type 4 or type 2 to type 4 like that there should be one relationship which should exist because there when there are multiple entities suppose for example I am showing you this data model for example here a bank is there and account number is there so if bank if a particular bank is having multiple account numbers they, generally there will be so many account numbers in a particular bank but there there should be one key field which is differing from every everything so account number di will differ for, from everything this account number so this account number qualifies this particular fields so if account number is not mentioned this does not exist we cannot enter all this so account number is qualifying this particular group of entity so most important this one it, it should qualify it is like a key qualifying will add a key so in the similar way referencing relationship so these are reusable qualifying and referencing generally is for type 3 entity and sometimes we can also use it for type 2 entities as well so type 2 to type 4 or else type 3 to type 4 entity like that so both are similar to qualifying will add a key fields referencing field this particular relationship will add will not add any key field referencing will add non key field that is the difference so qualif foreign key relationship means it is like re referencing only but it will be from one entity to another entity we have to mention individually referencing relationships individually for every field inside the entity this foreign key from type 1 to type 4 or type 4 to type 4 like that we can mention this one foreign key next these are relationships I know you cannot understand completely here but somehow by doing directly in the system we will be able to understand 
so hierarchies what are hierarchies here so whenever there is uh, some finance related activities are in, in the system so system will have some hierarchies because a cost center might have cost center groups and cost center hierarchies etc that this is like parent chain relationships a parent will be there and under that multiple child elements will be there it is like a nodal system this one so customer also will have a hierarchy business partner will have a hierarchy etc hierarchy is like a parent child relationship basically this one so it it can be also add we have that option also in mdg for everything here this option is there hierarchy all this here also in hierarchy there are two types version dependent hierarchy and synchronized synchronization means basically in any hierarchy suppose a tree is there i will open paint and let you know so here hierarchy means suppose there is one hierarchy name customer c2 and c3 so c1 is head of the hierarchy hierarchy will have one name it will start with one name and then these are sub nodes so c2 will have other two entities so if this is having c4 and this is having c5 so these two so basically this particular node is having this node so if this is having any bp hierarchy name something like uh, hierarchy h1 basically this is not a customer don't see it as a customer or anything it is like hierarchy name under this hierarchy these two nodes are there if this option is selected this particular option hierarchy type synchronized is selected basically whatever elements it is existing um, this particular structure c2 is having this structure like c4 and c5 inside that like that only when we are creating other node like c3 this should also exist in same way so here also c4 and c5 are c6 or c c7 this type of functionality so system will verify whether it is existing in the same structure or not so under this particular hierarchy name both the nodes should have same structure like this in the same way this is called synchronized hierarchy this both are having same structures that is why this option is hierarchy type synchronized is there version dependent means hierarchies can be in different different versions for in first version um, so hr can see us in some version and uh, our manager can see us in different hierarchy version that means in a particular context they will be able to see us from client perspective in some sometimes other person should client should see us in different perspective so if client is watching us as a hierarchy uh, we will be under client manager so if our manager is watching our hierarchy or our uh, hr is work, watching our hierarchy in organization perspective then it will be in a different hierarchy that is like same um, same um, parent chain relationship structure but it will exist in different different versions that that is called version dependent hierarchy different different versions of hierarchies will be available so basically you understood right what is this hierarchy type next is validation or hierarchy so this one basically validation of a hierarchy so whether hierarchy should have validation or not let's go to ppt let's see so time dependency of entities or hierarchies basically in mdg there will be concept of addition 
it will come into picture when we are dealing with finance related objects if we are doing any finance related stuff any cost center or gl account or profit center so it is like annual activity every quarter it will be like from uh, march to february uh, march to feb or uh, financial year from uh, from january to december in a particular year 2024 or 2023 like that it is like that particular um, but that particular data model will have those entities which are only time dependent it is it is like only in a particular time from from time on to time will exist for that so in those cases additions will be there addition is short representation of validity so we cannot use any anything which is not applicable today suppose there is a financial thing so for example profit center which is applicable for the 2023 year so today if we try to open it it should it should not be used presently so it will be only relevant to 2023 so that is called addition in that addition only that will get saved today it will not be valid so valid from date has to be filled by user while creating addition that's it so this is time dependency it will exist both for hierarchies and entities that is why this is normal entity hierarchy and this is hierarchy related related validity thing this is entity related and this is hierarchy related this one is hierarchy related so both are same one more important thing to discuss is if an entity is having addition selected here if any other entity is dependent on that particular entity like type 4 entity that type 4 entity should also have entity uh, validity it should be an again it should be addition only we should not make it not addition because parent if parent node is having addition child node should also have addition that is the concept that is uh, a, a mdg will verify that when we are activating it so we have to double check that one as well so key assignment basically when we are opening any uh, any database table or any master data related thing key assignment either we can fill the key there will be three uh, four types so first one is we can give no internal key assignment key cannot be changed so that means once we only uh, once we give it either in change mode or uh, any mode we cannot change that particular thing it will be grayed out next time so other, another one is internal key assignment only that means that field will be empty and grayed out we don't even need to enter it internal key assignment means system only allocates the a particular number or any particular value dynamically at mdg level so third one key can be changed no internal key assignment so that means if we are going to change mode and try to change it that key will be changed that key can be changed by us and it doesn't have any internal key assignment possible because if we are changing it system should not do anything to that so this is the third option another option is key can be changed internal key assignment possible that means he in this case we can change the key as well if we keep that uh, particular and um, if we keep that particular field as blank in the ui system itself automatically assigns a value to it so this is like two in one both so basically all these four are the key assignment possibilities i think you understood this part so i have covered this so text generations now what is text generation now here we can see if we try to this text generation can be done only for type 1 entity or type 2 entity we cannot do it for type 3 and type 4 entities that is the standard concept so if i go back we can see here 
type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. If I go to type 1 entity and go to double click this one, here there will be one checkbox key language dependent key text and then this one. So here what it takes is text generations. So when this can be done, text can be generated only for type 1 and type 2 entities. Here these can be filled dynamically. So this is the important point here. MDG also enables language dependent text. That means either Chinese language or Dutch language. If, if that is in any other language also, there also we can still maintain the text in the MDG. Now let's see what is that concept. First I am enabling this medium text as length as 30. 30 I am giving and click on enter and save it. I am saving it. Now in meanwhile, let's see in type 1 in generated table what is the how it is having in generated table how it is having the fields inside. Let's see. So it has been saved. Here we can see that it is not having any any descriptions here. No descriptions are available. But once I I click on this activate button now because I have entered 30 there. If I activate it, that's it. I have activated. Now let's see the difference. Now if I go back go back and come here again there, there will be another text table got generated so for type 1 entity it text table got generated in this text table we can see txtmi one additional attribute will get added description so that is the point if we go to main one here it will not be there but in second in text table this will be there so txtmi this is like medium text if we add long txt lg will come if we add short txt sm will come txt sm like that these descriptions will get added let's see now every time we don't need to get activated so sometimes we can use visualize as well if you check on visualize we can see directly type 1 and type txtmi both are coming here now type 4 it is not having anything like that. So go back. Now in type type 2 entity also we can try that. Type 2 also supports long text, medium text and short text. Now long text means I am giving 40 character limit. Medium text I am giving 30 character limit. This is for type 2 I am giving. This is 20 character limit. That's it. If I save it it will get saved successfully no errors now if I click on visualize because here we cannot see type 2 entity because we are not using any relationship to type 2 entity we cannot see here but once I activate this one we can see the difference activating this I am activating this data model now let's see the difference here that's it now data model has been, has been activated. Now let's go back and see. Now click on this. Now type 2 is having, it is also generating text table. Now if I go into text table, we can see all three types of descriptions got generated. So this one we can add in the UI as well. TX, TMI, TX, uh, SH, LG, these are all. I think you understood now. Descriptions we can add just by clicking this particular um, 
simp th this one if we fill directly directly it will get added we don't need any con complex stuff and all these are just provided by mdg box itself now i have enabled that checkbox language dependent text because it is mentioned i have mentioned here mdg also enables language dependent text let's see what happens now activated and go back and activate the data model that's it now if i go to type to entity here let's go to type to entity related tables if i go to text table now we can see a difference lngu language key got added now what happens is we can add multiple descriptions this short text medium text and long text we can mention in different different languages so in one row we can add a add in english in another row we can add in spanish in another row in turkey language in another row in dutch language etc etc like that we can add multiple languages by using this property this particular feature in mdg that's it so this part is done text generation we understood it now attachments so basically what is this and just this is very simple checkbox but it is a good feature in mdg if we go here in type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 in 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 type 2 type 3 type 4 we should not enable that option because it is it doesn't support only type 1 entity will support this one so if i go here this one this particular checkbox it is very important if we enable this and save it now i am going back and activating it after activation we will be able to see some differences in the tables tables generation now if i go to go back go back again click on this now we can see two extra tables got generated for type 1 entity so these are attachments if you double click it we can see all this data file type file size and all so basically what it happens is in ui we can attach any type of file in the ui directly so suppose for example this is there this this file is there i want to attach this particular file in a change request so we can directly add in that particular by en by enabling this we can directly add this not at change request level but this will be at type 1 entity level we can do this so let's go back and understand other things sets so here sets means here we can see another option type 1 this is another checkbox we can enable it in in very few cases so it set means this is a concept of abap and also here it is possible to create an entity which is a group of other entities that means there is an example for this in in zero g data model it is a finance related data model in that there will be consolidation financial consolidation governance there will be one tab in nwbc in that you can see bdc so these are like consolidation units we can uh, we can group up some entities and create a set in the mdg so by enabling this checkbox this can be done so this is only this is also only for type 1 entity system automatically provides data store for this if you want more into this i will show you one more one more thing in the ui itself because most of them doesn't know this one 
in NWBC here I will show you cur currently in financial consolidation governance SAP has done this so if you see consolidation related UIBBs here we can see breakdown category set only this one is used as a set by SAP if you go into this here we can create a new set here this is a set UIBB if you click a, a create a new it is like a new set will get created here set name if you give anything here now set attributes will come now in a, here we have to add any entity type so which type of entity we want to add that one we can we can select here and go further so here there will be from and two attributes so from means from which from which row of currency we have to give this two means until which one this is like a row a ranges from this to this this is a particular set like that we can divide an entity then in a particular change request this is called setting uh, this is called grouping also it is like set con this is a set concept that's it now set helps in entity here if you go here we can give set helps also if you give any set help so basically whatever check table assigned to this that set help related thing it will get removed and it will get overridden with this one which is coming here so this this one is given the most priority after this now source field short text this one when we are giving any um, anything for example I am giving BUKRS it is mostly used in company code related thing so I am just giving S11 and I will show you data type BUKRS this is company code which is given by SAP so if you go into this domain in value range we will be able to see this value table but in this value table it doesn't have anything like TXTMI or descriptions will not be there directly it is a big complicated table but in this type of tables SAP is not able to find any text table as well because this is not check table or text table it is directly a transparent table it is not having any anything like descriptions or anything so in this particular rare cases we have to use this type of thing so short text means we have to give the field name here which which one we have to use it as short text for example here because this is company code related thing company code will have name of the company here but xt is there so we can copy this and paste here in that particular cases but xt but xt but xt in these three places if you maintain whenever any f4 help get triggers it, so in f4 help system will know that it has to take this particular field as a description because it is not mentioned anything like txtmi or anything like that description is not there directly and also there is no text table for this that is the reason in this particular cases we have to use this type of options these three are same now temporary keys means whenever we give key assignment as internal key assignment or internal key assignment possible suppose if I give this one system will ask missing number range object this one that means when we are selecting this into internal key assignment compulsory we have to give some SPRO SNRO related number range object here so that system will pick from that number range object and assign to it dynamically this is the concept now active area active area means whenever any uh, entity type any change request or anything gets final check approved so this active area means it, the system will move the data which is present in staging area 
that will move get moved to active area so that is the concept from uh, this is only used in reused data model not in uh, not in uh, um, flex data model reuse and flex are two types of data models in sap mdg so this active active area will be used only in reuse data model now deletion what is this so if suppose i have created one company code inside any customer but that company code because it is a master data either we have to mark it for deletion but we should not delete it from the system the, so deletion will not be allowed it should be like not allowed only if it is if we are allowing the deletion in system they will be able to get delete option and they on clicking that system will delete that particular entity that is why deletion we have to make deletion not allowed in some cases description means whatever we give here type 1 this description it will it will be shown when we are configuring cr step level attributes so here i will show you in mdjmg here if we go general settings we can see descriptions when we are doing changes here in change request configure property set change request step here we can see descriptions like that for change request we will be able to see descriptions here and if we go depth into it we will be able to see change request step descriptions if you go more depth into it we will be able to see entity type descriptions here in similar way when we are configuring this particular any mdg related stuff at uh, entity type level that description will come here so that it will be easy for us to understand which entity type is this that's it this is for information purpose only this is not used in any coding and all this is just for uh, making user easier to configure in later stages that's it so if you go more deep into it we can see attributes and its descriptions so attribute descriptions also comes that means this one if you go into attributes here also there will be description this particular description will come here when we are configuring it that's it but uh, physically there is no importance of the description field from from working perspective like uh, only for understanding perspective this description is needed so so it, it is just recommendation from S, from sap that we have to maintain one description here not a necessity so structure and table means um in smt mapping suppose in a mapping in active area where it is getting stored if we if we are storing it inside mara table or marc table we have to mention we can mention here mara it will get it will be acceptable now field means inside mara this particular entity where it is particularly targeting that field so in mara all the fields will get showed here that particular field we can give here and extra x fields means in change scenarios we will be using this x fields so i think i have covered all of this let's see in brief temporary keys so temporary keys means for auto generation by the system in staging area until final check activations are done so for auto numbering this will be used active area this should not be used for type 3 entity and it specifies whether entity is flex or used entity this one also we understood deletion whether it can it is straight forward thing deletion now description of entity so description it is non generative field it is it doesn't get generated in any mdg related thing it will be only for providing some information while configuring activity set process modeling this one i showed you directly so structure table it is an optional entry it is not mandatory 
and table also we can give it is it is also for information for purposes only if this can be used in mapping or general this is also optional purpose now structure uh, this is also optional purpose only this can be used in smt mapping as well x represents in change scenario this will be useful in change scenario when we are uh, using uh, this one when we are doing any change scenario this x represents inside the structure whether it has been changed if it is blank that means that particular field is not changed now attributes now i am going to mention another one if i go to uh, attributes here there will be this field Cur currency or unit of measure field will be there so this one suppose there is a material material is having some weight and unit of measure unit of measure means it is a weight weight will have either kilograms or milligrams or any tons or anything like that so in those cases we need two attributes one one attribute is for um, measuring that quantity another attribute is for measuring that unit of measure so it is measuring something in which in which unit it has to measure so like that two attributes we have to use in those cases one is for maintaining that number and another is for maintaining whether it is kg or m milligrams or anything that is the concept of this one unit of measure i think i have covered almost everything here let me know if you have any doubts so now i am going to start my own data model for your understanding i am deleting this i am deleting all i'm deleting all the data models all the elements i'm deleting now it has been deleted now let's start understanding how to do data modeling from database perspective for example we are having one bank data so we know if bank is there in any bank will have its own country and bank name and bank branch so in every bank branch we can see multiple accounts because we, many people will come and deposit their uh, their money in the bank that is why in a bank the, in a bank in a particular branch also there will be many bank accounts related to that so that means here it is there zt bank accounts now bank id bank account number are and all are there now bank is zt bank it is storing just bank data it is not storing any account related data but to store account related data it is not just one account to store if you if you give account here account number suppose we are giving here so because bank id is the only key here account number only one we can give that means practically it is not possible because one bank is having only one account number so it is wrong it is the mistake so we should not add bank account here now because of that reason there will be another master data table which will have another key because this bank id is having another key here now a bank account holder name first name last name government id account type these are coming 
now again in account type also there will be multiple account types and government id now what happens now here there will be another one because everyone every bank account holder will have their own address but that address will be not just one address they can have either temporary address or permanent address so that is the reason we cannot directly add one one here one one address we cannot add here that is why there will be another address here it will have address type also as a key so here address type means either it will it will it will have first address type will be either permanent address another one is current address two types of address types we can maintain it, if we can maintain here in in type 2 entity because entity mdg will generate those text tables and we can maintain from file upload method rest other things it will be common in any address type now let's start preparing this from data model perspective so first we have to give one entity it should have all this so bank is the entity let's create that now i am creating new entity which is called bank now it is of type 1 entity so type 1 entity it is now country bank name and branch i will add that so inside this i am going to add attributes country country means b a n k s country i have given now bank name and branch bank name bank name i am giving as car 40 now bank name is done now from excel branch also it is needed so which branch it is located at branch car 30 i am giving this now if i save this one in relationships we have to delete the old one save so now it has created one bank which is having bank name branch and country now go back here we have to mention data element so after mentioning data element only that bank will get added so i am giving as bank id generally it will be num 10 so 10 numbers i have activated this now it is not giving any errors now if i visualize this we can see currently i am having a bank which is having bank number and characters uh, this ba bank name branch and country so this is done now 
for every branch for every bank there will be a, a multiple accounts so account number it is a must and it is a qualifying because it is it should be qualifying entity now i am going back and i am creating a new entity now so now that entity name is account account is the name but if i give directly like this system will think this is finance related object that is why account i have i should not give bank account b account i will keep now this account will have account number as qualifying relationship because this is the type 3 entity we have to create it i want to i don't want to generate any database tables for this because this is uh, given by the user directly i don't want any da database table generation here so that is why i am giving this one as type 4 entity so this because this is having group of this data again for type 4 entity as we know we should not give any attributes so i am going to here and giving individually all these attributes account holder first name means shortly account account holder achf name Ac account holder l name last name so first name is i am giving as car car 40 again last name i am giving as car 50 so first name last name i have given now account type i am giving account type what i have to give as account type so account type means it can be like savings account or current account like that so account type i am not giving directly because it should have another data element so government id i will give government id also i will not give because these two need another data element which should be maintained for now i am giving account type account type as normally i am giving as car 30 either savings account or current account that details will be there so government id means id it can be aadhar card number or anything we can give it as num 15 max no no num c i will keep num c characters also sometimes it might have so that is why so num c 15 i give that's it now b account right so i am going to relationships now type one entity means what is the type one entity bank so from bank this is starting to which entity to account account b account so i i gave this no relationship now it has been created now this should be leading relationship because bank account does not exist if bank is not there that is why it is leading relationship cardinality is 1 to n 
data element it is not needed it is only needed in few cases suppose if we want to we, this data element is can be filled only in rela referencing relationship not in leading relationship so the, this just uh, to override its data element which is coming from entity type that's it so this no existence check means suppose this this uh, particular one it is having one um, data element which is having one check table so that check table will get ignored if no existence check is selected but in our case we want it to get checked that is why i am not clicking this one i am don't need this check box so description this is also like that only this is this will appear in configurations bank to bank account relationship that's it this relationship has been created now i am clicking on save and see it is asking qualifying relationship qualifying relationship is must because i have mentioned cardinality 0 to uh, 1 to n if i give as 1 to 1 it doesn't ask anything it will get saved see this is the difference now cardinality i am giving 1 to n so if i give 1 to n cardinality now we can see not now let's go to let's go to here let's add one more entity because here we can see a key field is needed this should be qualifying if this is there then only system should able to create all this data without this we should not able user to enter all this that is why qualifying relationship is needed so account number is the one account number hcc and o i am just giving now i am giving this as type entity so so type 3 entity do, doesn't generate any database tables so this will work for us so account number will be number number 15 11 i am saving this one num 11 does not exist num 15 i will give max 15 numbers will be give now if i go back now see this bank account and attributes so this is fine this is also done now if i go to relationships we have to mention relationship from type 3 to type 4 entity type 3 entity is the one which we created just now so type 3 is account number so acc and o account number account num account number to b account bank account now here to is bank account this should be qualifying and every time we do qualifying relationship it should be 0 to n and there is a reason for it qualifying means because qualifying means every time it should be 1 to n because zero we cannot mention because it is needed to fill by the user that is why i i have to give qualifying here now 
I can see here. Description we can mention account number two bank account relationship that's it now we can save this one now if I visualize this data model we can see one ba bank is having bank bank ID bank ID bank name branch country now bank account is having so when we are doing leading relationship this particular key entity key entity or key attribute this one will get transferred to here in the similar way which I have shown in this excel this one is common in all three places like that if we want multiple things in this particular one another one key will be adding so that it will store multiple things here so this is just based on cardinality now it is adding this one from qualifying now this is also second one these two are key fields here now only these three are attributes now like that now address data address data we have to create another one so I am going back entity types here I will create new so ADDR data I am giving now this should be type 4 entity now data element it is not needed because this is type 4 entity that's it now I am going to attributes now in address data which attributes I have to give so first I am giving all this I, I will just copy all this because it will street postal country region house underscore number uh, house number street to landmark building all these I have given street I, uh, for all of them I am just giving street means KR20 we can add road number also if we if we require so postal means postal code NAMC maximum postal code will have 10 characters I am thinking so I am giving that country means B A N K S this one I remember region means CAR 20 CAR 30 something like that I am just giving this, this will be free text house number it will be CAR 10 street 2 I will give as care 35 landmark I will give as care 25 because data elements should be different different for everything if we match same data elements multiple times when we are in UI so because of uh, MDG in back end if, if data elements match it will get mismatched in the mm, data transfer level that's why I'm giving different different data elements here so building means care 15 I'm giving building name this is done now next ADDR data address data I will link to some other thing now I will create another another entity because address type we have to give ADR TYP here this should be of storage address type should be of type 2 and data elements should be
char 20 address type should be like char 20 char 5 I will give so type 2 entity char 5 it has taken because this is type 2 I want to create a te uh, text tables also so I will give 10 here 15 now save this not saving this now ADR type has been created now from ADR type to ADR from ADR type to so from address type to ADR address So let's see here first of all ADR TYP address type. I am saving it blindly because it is not coming in value list. I am going back. So ADR type ADR data ADDR data. ADR type to ADDR data. Now ADR type to ADDR data. That's it. Now again, this is because ADDR data is type four entity. ADDR data. This should be ADR type two, type two to type four entity. It should be qualifying with one to n. Now here. bank account BACC to ADDR now this one should be again leading relationship one to n so here description I am not giving for now attribute country is assigned more than once this is coming because here at last I have created ADDR data here we can see country is there so we should not give country again because country has been used already I am removing this country 1 I am giving and then I am giving as BINKS that's it I am saving this now it doesn't throw any error that's it now I am just activating this data model Z4 So data model is getting activated that's it it has been activated now let's see the list of generated tables 
now we can see address type is having text table we can see here it is having txt mi and this one now I am going back bank check table is there and in bank there are further attributes as well so better than this one let's see in visualize data model it will be better so a bank is there so bank is having some ID IFSC code for example in our in India it will be IFSC code for bank ID now that will have branch name bank name and country these three are attributes now in bank account so these will get added here and bank name it will not get added only key fields will get added here now account number it is a key field which is coming from qualifying rest others we can see account type this is uh, account holder first name account holder last name government ID proof now in every bank account there will be multiple address data that is why again bank is coming from here again account number this is leading relationship from here account number is leading entity type from the from here it is coming account number now address type this is coming from qualifying entity rest others it is normal attributes so like this we can build data models i think this is enough for us guys for today thank you for this